going to talk about five math games that you can play during your morning meeting. Now, morning meetings should be a fun time to build community, but if there's an opportunity to sneak in a little extra, then I want to take it. So these are five tried and true math games for morning meeting that my students really love. The first one I have named in and out dance -a So the way that this game works is whatever skill you're practicing, for example, if you're practicing number recognition to five, you would have cards one through five and each student would get one card. And then they would put the card down in front of them in a circle. And then you put the music on and then students walk around the circle. And then when the music stops, they need to look down and see whatever number they have. And then you're gonna call out a number. So if I called out the number three, all the students who had the number three would get to go into the circle and dance while the rest of us keep going around the circle with the music playing. And then we pause again. The students who were in the middle come out to an empty spot. And then I call out a different number of say five, they look down. If they are standing at a five, then they get to go back in. Even if they just came out of the circle, they get to go back into the circle. So then again, the music starts again, the rest of us walk around while the kids get to dance in the middle. And this game is really versatile. You can do it for shapes, you can do it for letters, you can do it for anything you wanna practice. You can have little cards for it and play this game. Bonus points if it's songs that they really enjoy, like some kids bop songs or, or songs from movies that they might like. They really enjoy the opportunity to dance and just let loose. Next game is called what number am I writing? So I'll give students a range of numbers that I want them to practice. So let's say one to 10, and then each player gets one pencil. I try to do pencils that only have the eraser on and that are not sharp because they're gonna be using the pencil to draw a number on their friend's back. So if I was playing, I know I had a, my partner in front of me, I would try and draw a number and then they have to guess what number it was that I was drawing. So they're feeling the, the their partner draw the number on their back. Now it's important to talk about not pressing too hard, making sure that everybody's comfortable. And I try to use the eraser side of the pencil or a pencil that's not sharp to, to make sure that everybody is comfortable and that nobody is feeling hurt. The kids seem to enjoy being able to guess. They really have to think about it and they need to think about the formation of the numbers that they're using for this purpose to figure out what their partner is writing. And like I said, I try to give a range so it's not between one and a thousand and students are just writing random numbers that they don't really know. The next game is based on a Kagan game called Formations. If you're familiar with Kagan structures, it's a lot of cooperative learning, usually in groups of four. Um, so students are in groups of four and I say to them, make a shape that has three sides. So then they would have to figure out as a team what shape I'm talking about, triangle, and then they need to figure out how to show me the triangle. So some students might just use their fingers, some lay out and use their whole bodies to make a triangle. So one person's laying this way, the other two make a point this way, and it gets really it gets really fun. You do need a lot of space for formations. The students are gonna lay out on the ground and making sure to discuss with them to look around, be aware of their surroundings so they don't accidentally kick a friend when they're trying to get into the formation that you say. And so that one is just for shapes, but you could do the same thing. If you're giving a number sentence and you want them to decide if it's an addition number sentence or subtraction number sentence, and they would make the plus sign or the minus sign, you could have them even do fractions. Like, can you show me one fourth? That was really interesting. I didn't really know what to expect when I said to my students, show me one fourth. And we had some kids who just used their fingers and we had one group who ended up in a little circle. And so then they stuck their leg out and they're like, here, hold my leg up. So one person had their leg out and then another one had their leg out this way, so they crossed. So they made a circle that was cut into fourths. And I thought that was so interesting that that was kind of what they decided to do with it. But that, those games are great for cooperative learning. You're getting some movement in, some different systems, not just sitting and writing to really help students understand the concepts and really think deeply about what they're trying to do. Oh, and numbers. Duh. Numbers are the easiest or not. I wouldn't say the easiest. Numbers are a basic one. What's four plus five? And if they can figure out it's a nine, they need to, as a group, show me the, the number nine. So it could be the actual numeral nine. They could show nine items. It's really up to them and you can let their creativity fly. The next game is called Catch My Pattern. So for this game, I would make some kind of pattern. So maybe it was a clap, snap, clap, snap, and then the students need to figure out what my pattern is and make the same pattern. 
or maybe it would be clap, clap, shoulder tap, clap, clap, shoulder tap, and they need to do the same thing. Once they get good at it, you can have the students be the ones to create the pattern. You can also have them start to describe to you what pattern it is that you made. So did you make an AB pattern? Did you make an ABC pattern? Lots of different options with that game. The last game is helpful if you have a hundreds chart up where your students can see it. And the game is called Guess My Number. So the students need to ask you questions, kind of like 20 questions, to figure out what your number is. So if my number was 70 and a kid asked me, does it have a seven in it, I could say yes and eliminate all the numbers that don't have a seven. Or I could say, does it have a seven in the tens place? And if I said yes, then they could figure out, oh, it has to be one of these numbers that has a seven in the tens place. Kids may start with, is it one, is it two? And they'll realize that that's an inefficient strategy because then they would have to ask you every single number and start to ask questions that eliminate more numbers. And if they do need a little, if they are kind of stuck in, is it one, is it two, is it three? You can give that suggestion. You're like, oh, maybe you might ask me, does it have a five in it? And that can kind of help them think about numbers more globally and figure out how to eliminate numbers that they don't need. And when they've eliminated numbers, you can actually cross them off. If you have a dry erase hundreds chart, you can flip them over. If you have a hundreds chart in a pocket, like pocket hundreds chart. And if you don't have those things, that's something that you can play in the hall as well while you're waiting to go into specials. So lots of choices with that game. So my five morning meeting math games were in and out dance a what number am I writing, formations, catch my pattern, and guess my number. Let me know in the comments down below which one you're gonna try first.